Hi, this is Justin Coletti. You may know me from Sonic Scoop, but today I'm in the Plugin Lines channel, and we're going to be doing a walkthrough and a demonstration of the Lisa from Tomo Audio Labs, a new dynamic EQ developed by Brainworks. This is an exacting emulation of the only hardware dynamic EQ that I've ever heard of. Six bands of dynamic EQ in rack mount hardware form. Only a handful of these were ever made, and they're still being made today. Six bands of great EQ with an opto compressor for each and every one of those bands. We're going to be talking about exactly how this thing works. I'll give you a walk through the controls and also what makes it interesting. And right out of the gate, very cool thing about this approach to dynamic EQ is it's not like so many of the digital dynamic EQs you've probably seen or used in the past that have a graphical interface where you see the frequencies jumping around there and you see all the little lines dancing around and a very kind of visual focused way of setting your dynamic EQ. This one adjusts, feels, and sounds a lot more like high-end mastering grade hardware, giving you kind of more of an ears first, intuitive approach to using dynamic EQ. There's some amazing applications here, particularly in mastering, where you can really zero in on particular elements in the mix, but you can also use the mono version of this on a whole variety of instruments. It can be great on things like vocals, where you can use it to control sibilance or boxiness or nasalness in a vocal, or you can use it on bass to just target specific notes that are poking out a little bit too much. A dynamic EQ can be more transparent than a compressor and more transparent than an EQ, and we'll go into some applications in detail in just a minute. Before we dive into all of the controls, I should give a quick shout out and mention to a new control that's in a Plugin Alliance plugin for the first time. It's this new TX Drive control developed by the engineers at Brainworks. There's now a new transformer model in this plugin that you can boost or reduce the gain on, independent of the headroom control. More on that in a second. First, let's go through the controls here. It looks a little daunting at first glance, but once you figure out how one band works, they all kind of work the same way, and it's actually pretty easy. Let's take this low mid band for starters. Here we have a gain knob, which allows us to boost our gain in the low mids, and we can actually change it between a boost or a cut with this switch. So it works a little bit like a Pultec EQ. We can turn on and off that EQ boost or cut. And here we can adjust its bandwidth to make it narrower or wider. Below this boost and cut knob, there is a frequency select knob where we can select the frequency that we're boosting and cutting. In this case, anywhere from 180 hertz all the way up to almost 9K. And this selects the frequency band not only for the EQ portion, but also for the dynamics portion. By turning up this threshold, we can increase the amount of compression that we're getting. But we can also toggle between compression and expansion with this switch right here. So each of these bands could compress or expand. We have this ratio knob that allows us to take it from a low ratio to a high ratio. And there's even this control here to adjust our attack and release settings. They're labeled in a pretty simple way. Each of these letters, F, S, or M, stands for fast, slow, or medium. And the first letter is the speed of the attack, while the second letter is the speed of the release. FF for fast attack, fast release. SF for slow attack, fast release. FM for fast attack, medium release, and so on. Inside the dynamic section of each of these bands is an opto cell. So you're actually getting opto style compression with a relatively low ratio with a ratio button turned off, probably something like three to one on average. As an opto compressor, it is very program dependent. And when we click the ratio button, it goes higher, maybe something closer to 10 to one on average. The low mid and high mid bands work exactly the same way. The low and high bands are pretty similar with one little exception. They can also be turned into a low shelf in the case of the low band or a high shelf in the case of the high band. Everything else is identical for all of these. And then just like in the hardware, there's one extra band for each, a low boost that does boost only and a high boost that does boosting only, no cutting. 
There's a couple more little extra controls here, a low cut filter that goes from 20 hertz up to 180 hertz to filter out some of the extreme lows, an input and output gain control, and a mix knob, allowing you to dial back just how much compression or expansion you're providing. Two really interesting and unusual features here are a master threshold, which allows you to take down all of the thresholds at once, increasing the amount of compression or expansion you're doing, or decreasing it across all of the bands at once. And this dry mute switch, which is very cool. If you turn on dry mute, you're only going to be hearing the affected signal, what you're adding with your compression or expansion. In addition to the dry mute, there's a whole bunch of useful controls down here, including the auto listen. With the auto listen engaged, if you click on any one of these bands, you will solo that band and get to hear the boost or the change in frequency selection you're doing just to that band. By default, both the parameters and the side chains are linked for the left and right channels, but we can easily relink or unlink them by hitting these toggles. With the side chain link active, each band will be hearing a sum of the left and right channels and using that to trigger the dynamic section. But when we turn the side chain link off, they're completely independent with the left and right triggering two completely unlinked dynamic sections. But you don't have to just use this in stereo mode either. There's an MS knob that takes it into mids here and sides in the bottom channel. So you can have totally different dynamic EQ settings for your mids and sides. Really useful, say, if you want to DS vocals just in the mids, or take some harshness off the tops of cymbals just in the sides, or maybe control the lows on a hard pan tom hit, or just focus in on addressing the lows that are straight down the center, like a kick drum or a bass. We have a few more fun controls down here on the bottom, a master input gain and output gain for the entire plugin. The mono maker control, which allows us to center our low frequencies below a certain point. The stereo width, which allows us to increase or decrease the stereo spread of the signal above the point selected with mono maker. And a headroom control, which allows us to increase or decrease just how hard we're driving the saturation inherent in the original hardware unit. For the first time in Plugin Alliance history, we're adding in this new transformer drive knob. This TX drive is really interesting. It has a new model transformer and decreasing or increasing it will change just how much saturation we're getting out of that transformer. You can even turn the transformer model completely off. Last and certainly not least is the TMT section which allows us to emulate two distinctly different channels. There's several to choose from here, or you can select random channels as well. Or if you want to use it in digital mode, you can have two matched channels. One last fun little feature is this LED slider here, which allows us to dim down or brighten up the LEDs on it, which was a feature in the original hardware. Fun little touch there. Plugin Alliance is always throwing in stuff like this. All right, that is every last little knob on the Tomo Audio Labs Lisa. Let's now talk about some applications for dynamic EQ and hear those applications together. I've got a track here from a band called Cartoon Lizard called For You. This one, I believe, was mixed by one of their band members, Richie Hemphill, who did a great job on it. All that I've got going on here is just the Tomo Audio Lisa and the Brainworks Limiter True Peak. And I've tried to recreate my entire master using nothing but these two plugins, which surprisingly is something I can do because the Tomo Audio Lisa, it's got basically everything I need. It's got multiband compression. It's got EQ. It's got my mono maker, the stereo width control, and a little bit of saturation, which I can dial in pretty significantly on this one, really bringing this headroom control down and bringing this TX drive control up. Let's drop into this chorus and hear it with nothing but just the limiter on it. So totally dry with just a little bit of dynamic control happening from the limiter. First and bypass.
So I think you can see and hear what's going on here. Although the mix is good, the low end in this track is kind of the only thing triggering this limiter. We've got to dial that back a little bit. And I have this limiter set pretty aggressively, and it's getting up to 6 dB down, but really only on the low frequencies. Nothing else is being touched by the limiter practically at all, so we've really got to tuck that low end back a little bit. But I really love this kind of big, fluffy, pillowy thing that's going on in the kick, and I don't want to get rid of that. So I'm going to use the Tomo Audio Labs Lisa to reduce some of our low frequencies by a couple dB, but then use an expander on that low frequency module to bring up just the kick hits when they're occurring. I've got this in mid side mode, so I'm doing this primarily to the mid band. But as we start to tighten up that low end and tuck in some of the low mid and mid frequencies a little bit, the high frequencies are going to start to come forward a little bit more. And I don't want them to get too exaggerated. And I don't want some of that high acoustic guitar stuff to poke out too much. So I'm putting a little bit of a de esser here in the higher frequencies, leaning into that pretty hard in the side bands but then compensating with a little bit of a high frequency boost. So we're taking some of those compressed DS highs and then bringing those up just a little bit on the sides. When we hear this before and after, it's getting a little brighter, so it's likely to sound a little bit louder in the after, even though I'm trying to get pretty close to level match before and after on this track. I'm also really driving the headroom pretty hard and the transformer drive pretty hard on this one to get a little bit more color and saturation out of it and using a little bit of the mono maker and stereo width as well. You'll be able to see I'm actually driving some of these dynamics modules pretty hard and doing some fairly significant reshaping, but it still sounds pretty good. All right, now let's hear before and after. Here we go. <laughs> You hear how that starts to open up pretty beautifully? And I'm actually doing some pretty significant dynamic range control here. All these opto compressors and expanders on each channel are firing pretty hard, but you can actually get away with a lot of compression or expansion and EQ on the Lisa. All of these circuits, unlike a conventional EQ that are usually wired in series, these are wired in parallel. And when they combine together, I don't know, I just find it a little bit more seamless than working with a conventional mastering EQ and a conventional dynamic EQ. And also the layout on here, because it's so non-visual and ear-driven, and I'm not looking at the frequency response chart the entire time, it just kind of pushes me to be a little bit more creative and a little bit more listening driven instead of looking driven, which is something I really love about working with this tool. Let's hear this pushed a little bit more extreme here on a track that needs to be brightened up even further. I have a track here called Witching Hour by an artist named Blythe Berg. And again, really nice mix done here by her engineer. It was a little bit dark overall compared to other tracks in this genre. So we wanted to end up brightening this one up considerably. This time I'm using the Lisa in a stereo mode instead of a mid-side mode, but I'm doing a pretty similar thing again with the low frequencies. There's an expander here in the low end, so we're cutting lows substantially, but then allowing some of that low end to come back with an expander just when the kick drum is hitting. So we're not taking all the subs, all the lows out of the kick while making sure that we're tightening up that bottom end a little bit. There's also a little bit of compression going on here in more of the upper bass region and really significant cuts and some fairly significant compression in the mid range. Because of how much we're bringing down the lows and the low mids, the high end starts to jump out. And the problem there is that some of the sibilance in the vocal and some of the sizzle and the cymbals and things starts to poke out a little bit too much. So I'm going for some pretty heavy handed 
compression or actually fast attack, fast release limiting in the high frequencies, almost using this band a little bit like a de to try to counteract some of the sibilance that would otherwise be brought up. Let's hear a quick before and after. The only thing that's going on here is the Lisa and a little bit of the True Peak limiter from Brainworks at the end. Here we go. So I hope you get the idea. I'm kind of brightening things up, tightening things up pretty significantly, but also controlling that sibilance that would otherwise pop out. And I'm putting this thing into fairly extreme settings, a lot of EQ, a lot of compression, a lot of expansion, and still getting pretty pleasing sounds out of it. In the case of these two masters, I happen to go for slightly brighter sounds in each, but I try to keep them mostly level matched. You will feel both of them getting maybe a little bit louder because they are both getting a little bit brighter and that's kind of how our ear hears things. But you can also use this to do the exact opposite, really fattening things up, smoothing things out. And I've been impressed by just how far you can push the Lisa while still getting very musical results. It's just a really intuitive, really fun, and really ear-focused, ear-driven way of setting a dynamic EQ. But of course, the best way to hear what this thing really sounds like is to hear it on your own tracks. So go ahead and go over to plugin-alliance.com where you can get a free trial on this or anything else they make for two weeks. Or if you've got the mega subscription bundle, this is now just yet another tool that's included in your mega subscription. I had a lot of fun working with it. Hope you do too. Once you get a chance to try it, let us know in the comments down below. What have you been liking about this? What kinds of sources have you been enjoying it on? Want to hear all about it in the comments down below. I hope you found this walkthrough and demo of the Tomo Audio Labs Lisa useful. Thanks for hanging out with me. This has been Justin Coletti of Sonic Scoop, this time on the Plugin Alliance channel. See you next time.